excited that you're able to join us today. I trust God that God is going to once again reveal himself to us in his word. And as we look at the word of the Lord today, we're going to move from one level of glory to another level of glory in the name of Jesus. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I am your regular host on the program called The Mirror of the Word. We read a chapter of the Bible, and then we pray for those who are sick. We have been doing different series on this program, so I want to encourage you to please go on our YouTube channel and watch all the videos that we've done so far. We started on the book series, and we've been reading the book of Timothy, and we read Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, chapter 2, and we're going to be reading chapter 3 today. I just want to do a little recap on some of the things we said when we review 1 Timothy chapter 1 and chapter 2. We said that the key thing, the end of commandment, is pure love out of a is love out of a pure conscience and an unfeigned faith. And we say that we need to war a good warfare with the prophecy that has gone before us. We must not let go of what God has told us. You know, um, you're in a service, you receive the word of the Lord and you know it, you knew it, that that word was meant for you. You are supposed to hold on to it until you see the manifestation of what God said to you. In chapter 2, we said everyone needs to pray. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that that's the will of God for those who are in Christ Jesus. God wants us to pray. He said he wants us to say first and foremost prayer, supplication, and giving of thanks. Uh, that's First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Be made for all men and especially for those who are in authority. And I said that uh, we need to particularly pray for our leaders so that they can put in place policies that will help us to live a peaceful and a quiet life. Um, it's important for you to pray for your boss. You know, pray that it's going to go well with your boss so that your boss can allow you to serve God. A lot of people want to participate or attend program that is going to help them grow spiritually. But then, you know, the boss is had to put a shift on that day. And because you got bills to pay, you are unable to attend that program. But when you pray for your boss, you pray that God, you know, we deal kindly with your boss. You know, God will give you favor in the sight of your boss. You know, it was the same thing that happened to Daniel. God gave them favor in the sight of the people who are, that were asked to take care of them. So today, by the grace of God, we are going to be reading 1 Timothy chapter 3. And I trust God that as we read it today, we're going to be blessed. So I want us to go into the word of the Lord. I want you to please get your Bible. We are going to be reading together. Uh, like I normally say, it's not another preaching section. Uh, the purpose is for us to look into the word of God and let the Holy Spirit minister to us. Let him point out some things to us. So I'm going to be reading today from the King James Version of the Bible. And I want you to join me as um, I begin to read the word of the Lord. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of fatal local, but patient, not a brawler, not a covetous, one that rule well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice 
lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacon be grave, not double-tongued, not giving to much wine, not greedy, holding the mystery of faith of the faith in a pure conscience. And let this also be first proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto you, hoping to come unto you shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how you should behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Now, um, some people are kind of a little bit uh, not sure, let me not use the word confused, about the concept of the Trinity. So we, we can see one aspect of it in verse 16 of that scripture, talking about, you know, um, that it, the things of God is mystery. And uh, he said God was manifest in the flesh. That's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if we read John chapter 1 again, he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh. So we can see God was manifest. God came down, you know, uh, to save mankind. You know, God came down to save you and to save me. And that's an awesome thing. It's a wonderful thing. And we're told that he was also received back. Uh, he was received back up into the glory. Praise be to his name. Now, um, I want us to look at the characteristics of um, the office of a bishop, which was mentioned in the chapter of the Bible um, that we have just read. Uh, let me say this. Um, verse 1 says, It is a good thing to desire the office of a bishop. However, uh, those who desire such offices must be appointed by the Holy Spirit and not just their spiritual leaders. You know, I know that um, that scripture says that when you desire the office of a bishop, you desire a good thing. However, you must be appointed. You must have a witness in your spirit. Let me read a scripture. Acts of Apostles chapter 20, verse 20. This was the same Paul, you know, talking to bishop, guidance, all the people, you know, he, he was departing and he was encouraging them. And he said, take care and be on guard for yourself and the holy flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you bishops and guidance. You know, the word bishop is an overseer, a pastor, a shepherd. To shepherd, tend and feed and guide the church of the Lord and of God, which he obtained for himself buying it and saving it for himself with his own precious blood so can you see that you have been appointed as a guardian as a pastor as a bishop as an overseer so it's not enough for you to desire that office you have to be appointed by the holy spirit the holy spirit must appoint you you know, you have to have that witness. That's why it's important for each and every one of us to know how to be led by the Spirit. You know, we see some things in churches nowadays where P 
people were appointed into the office of a deacon or the office of a pastor uh, because of their financial contribution, because of their support, you know. <laughs> uh, the office of a bishop is not an honorary type title. It's not like a honorary doctorate degree that is given to you because of your contribution to the university. So we, you don't get spiritual title because of your contribution to the church. You must be appointed by the Holy Spirit. Let me give you another scripture or give you another example. In Acts of Apostles chapter 13 and um, in verse 1, we were told that they were in Antioch certain, you know, prophets, teachers, you know, and they minister unto the Lord in prayer and fasting. And after that, the Holy Ghost said unto them, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas, you know, so that they might go on to that which I have called them. And listen to this, he said, when they had fasted and prayed, and lay their hands on them they send them away i thought it was going to end there it was enough so it's one thing it doesn't matter you can call a man of god no matter how big the man of god is that is not enough you have to be sent away by the holy spirit and this is where the verse 4 of acts of apostles chapter 13 comes in it says so they being sent forth by the holy spirit i thought i just read in verse Three, they lay their hands on them and they send them away and then i now saw that says it says so they being sent forth by the holy ghost departed so uh there are two type of sending for there the first one is by the people who are who were before them people who were regarded as the pillars as the elders so that the second one is them being sent forth by the holy spirit so it's important for you that if you have the witness in your heart that God has called you into the ministry, you have to be sent forth by some people. You know, you must fulfill all righteousness. You can't just say you saw, you saw an angel in a dream uh, or you have a vision. So because of that, you're going to start a ministry. No, it's not enough. You need some people who are going to send you forth, people who are going to support you in prayer, prayers, people who are going to encourage you because... It is not what you think. And when I say ministry, I'm not just talking about uh, pulpit ministry. In whatever you want to do, you know, uh, one of the things people don't realize is that our workplace is our ministry. You know, wherever, you, even even your home, your home is your ministry. You know, um, God, God, I think in the scripture somewhere, he said, for I know that he will raise a godly seed. For you to raise a godly seed, you know, a, a child who loves God is a ministry. So when we are talking about ministry here, we are not just talking about the pulpit. So that's why you can't just go into your marriage anyhow. You need some guidance. Praise the Lord. Now, we want to quickly look at the characteristics of a bishop or an overseer or a pastor. What are the standards that are expected of them? And... Um, we're doing this so that um, if you desire such office, you will know what is expected of you. Uh, it's amazing to see politicians uh, uh, resigning in, in, in the UK uh, on moral issues or, f or on failure to meet expected standards. And I wonder sometimes, you know, seeing people in, in the ministry, you know, they are finding it dif difficult to step down. Uh, when they fall short of, you know, the standards we're going to be talking today. Um, you, you will see a pastor, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, having an extra marital affairs or you see a pastor, you know, um, you know, um, taking advantage of the position or the authority and they still hang on. They've been, they've been accused of corruption rather than then taking some time off to go and seek the Lord's faith and ask for the Lord's forgiveness they cling on to power. It ought not to be so. And uh, the reason why we also need to look at this is so that um, we can also pray for those people who are occupying those offices, you know, because um, it's, 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 it's a great assignment. It's a great work. And they need all our support. They need all the encouragement. And we should support them with our prayers. So he said the first thing is the Christian bishop must be blameless a person against whom no evil can be proved 
one who is everywhere invulnerable you know you cannot find fault in him just like jesus christ said it was written of jesus that um, uh, the devil came and cannot find any fault in him then second secondly they must be husband of one wife this is key he should be a married man so i uh, say that a bishop should be a married man a pastor should be a married man yes um i'm not going to say more than that but he should not be a polygamist have only one wife um have only one wife yes so um i think i'm going to stop there a pastor must be vigilant watchful um, because he has to watch over the church and uh, according to what we read in Acts of Apostles chapter 20 that the Holy Ghost have appointed you to watch over the people that he uh, that our Lord Jesus purchased with his precious uh, blood so um, a, a bishop or a pastor must be somebody who know the state of the church and able to trust God to minister to them through him so one of the things you find out about, about a good shepherd is that you go into church one way and you come out another way you know the pastor is able to release the word of god into your life without you telling the pastor just by ministering from the pupil or just by you know talking you know you know he's just addressing is addressing you know whatever problem you have without necessarily you going to have a counseling session he must be sober a man a man of a sound mind having a good understanding and the complete government of all his passion you know he should be a man of learning an extensive and well cultivated mind now he must be of a good behavior that's point number five you know a pastor or a bishop must be of good behavior um he must not be a rude person you know when when you see any pastor that is rude um just know that you know um <laughs> some work needs to be done uh, pray pray for that particular person that's what the scripture says now he must be given to hospitality a lover of strangers one who is ready to receive into his house you know uh that's important that's key you know uh i remember a testimony shared by you know uh for those of us you were from africa if you've ever heard of a late you know man of god uh who's going to be with the lord archbishop archbishop uh, benson in dahosa all the people that have you know uh, that have testify you know uh about what he has done there's one thing that is common to all of them they said that this man is given to hospital hospitality that um you know uh, some of them even pitied his wife because uh they say it's like a party in his house you know at all times that he would just go out and then pack people into the bus let's go to my house i want to give you lunch i want to buy lunch for you i want to provide lunch for you you know he was such a generous man you know that's the heart of a shepherd the heart of a pastor he must be apt to teach one capable of teaching not only wise himself but ready to communicate his wisdom to other one whose delight is to instruct the ignorant and who are out of the way he must be a preacher and um and zealous and vaffent you know so um, a good shepherd is one who is committed to people's spiritual development so uh, a good bishop must be someone who the only thing he's doing is not preaching for you to give you know if all you are hearing every sunday is that the lord is going to bless you you have to give this offering you have to give. it's time for you to move on because um one of these days i believe the lord is going to help us to look at the difference between you know a hireling and then a shepherd and then we look at the characteristics of the two so a good shepherd must be someone who is apt to teach you know he's not just preaching a sermon and and at the end of the sermon what's going to follow is an offering no um he was somebody that is giving to the people that is giving to the people that is leading is looking after their welfare he must not be giving to wine 
he must not be a striker, not quarrelsome, you know, um, not ready to strike a person who may displease him, not a persecutor. Um, number 10, he must not be greedy. I love this. Uh, let me let me read this. Uh, he must not be using unjustifiable methods to raise or increase his revenues. You know, let's let's do an appraiser of all the church programs that we see. How many of those programs are programs that have have titles like um, "Enter Ye Through the Narrow Gate." <laughs> or uh, receiving the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your souls. How many of such programs are uh, the just shall live by faith? How many of those programs are, have got a caption or a title um, like uh, lay hold on eternal life? So um, somebody went to a church and they said, oh, their prayer was, a, uh, was very good, that it felt like it was in the Pentecostal church, you know, well, firebrand prayer, according to what the person said. And the, the message, the sermon was fantastic, was just for about 20 minutes, but was powerful. But you said, guess what? Uh, they saved all those time, the time on prayer, the time on message so that they can take offering, that the offering took them another 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Can you see that it ought not to be so? Let me tell you something. Let me liberate you and set you free today. Don't, don't give because any pastor says you should give. Uh, prepare your offering before you leave your house. Um, <laughs> look, let, let, let's, let's, be, let's be realistic. You know, if, if you are listening to the Holy Spirit, if you are being led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit should have, if you are listening to him, you know how to hear him, the Holy Spirit will have told you before you leave the house that uh, they're going to be taking an offering today. So take an extra offering so that, you know, um, take an extra money so that when the offering is being raised, you know, you can give. You know, we, we should even be people where uh, the pastor does not necessarily need to raise an offering before we give. You know, we should give as we were led by the Holy Spirit. So it's okay for you, for the pastor to raise an offering for you not to give anything. Yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, just just give. You know, the, the first thing is your heart. You know, um, is your heart and according to that which you have. I don't know why I'm saying this today, but I believe that the Lord wanted somebody who is under guilt and under condemnation to be set free. So don't feel bad because you weren't able to participate in the convention offering. I know that, you know, they rub it in on you and they, they announce it on the people who it at all time. Look, God will reward your labor of love. Yeah, that's, yes, that's the word of the Lord. Now, he must not be covetous. That's point number 13. He must be a man who rules well his own house. One who properly presides over and governs his own family. Now, this point is very important. Uh, uh, number 15. It is required that he be not a novice. You know, um, I said this again, I said it earlier on, bishop is not a honorary title. Um, the person who is going to be ordained as a pastor to lead people must not be uh, someone who is newly converted to the faith. You know, he must be somebody who has been of consider considerable standing in the Christian church. So it mustn't be somebody who gave his life about three months ago and because he's, he's the, uh, um, the biggest giver in church, so we ordain him as a deacon or as a bishop. No, uh, that's not right. He, is, he must be somebody who has been proven, you know, proven. Um, you know, it is impossible that one who is not long and deeply experienced in the ways of God can guide others in the way of life. Uh, it must be somebody who is patient, you know, um, somebody who is ready to uh, forbear with uh, people. And then finally, number 16, 
it should be somebody ha that have a good report amongst the unbeliever. It ought not to be somebody that, you know, when the unbeliever comes around and says, Oh, is that your pastor? Really? Oh, is that your, <laughs> your deacon? Really? You know, so it's important. So, uh, 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 we need to take note, of, take note of those characteristics and then we need to begin to pray for those who are our spiritual leaders so that God is going to help them and God is going to uphold them and God is going to sustain them. So uh, that chapter ended by saying, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world and received up into glory. Now, if any of those standards, you know, any of those characteristics that we have read today, if it minister to you uh, or you know someone, someone you know that, you know, they, they are falling behind, what you can just simply do rather than gossiping or going to talk to someone and say, this is what the Bible says, look at all the lists, so, but they are not meeting up to the requirement, is that you can simply pray for them. And if you are that person, you can pray, you can ask the Lord to help you and ask the Lord to show you how to make the necessary amendment, you know, so that you will not be a reproach to the name of the Lord. Now, it's time for us to pray for those who are sick. Um, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 to 17, that that evening people brought to Jesus many people who had had demons inside of them. He spoke and the demons left the people. He healed all those who were sick. So Jesus made clear the full meaning or what Isaiah the prophet said. He took away our diseases and carried away our sicknesses. You know, I was listening to uh, Kenneth Copeland today and he said something that, you know, um, you know was quickening in my spirit. And he said, um, he, he used the illustration of the fact that, let's say you have a house, you have a house, or maybe you have a car, and then you sold your car and the car is gone the car is no longer there you say but in your mind you still have that car in your mind you know you can still have a picture of that car in your mind you can see yourself driving that same car you know maybe for some few months or thereabout even after many years you still remember you used to have that car and the trip on the journey you used to make with that car but the truth of the matter is that the car only existed in your mind. The car is no longer there. So it's the same thing with your sickness. Jesus Christ took away your sickness. So that sickness is existing in your mind. It is no longer there. So what we're simply going to be doing today is that um, we're going to be praying for you. Uh, that whatever is left in your mind, the Lord is going to remove it and the Lord is going to open your eyes, is going to make it clear to you the full meaning of what was written about him in, in Isaiah chapter 53 that he took away our diseases and carried away our sicknesses. So those sicknesses and those diseases, they are no longer there because by the stripe that he took upon himself, you were healed. And you are going to see today that the same sickness that is on you today is no longer going to be there tomorrow because it's gone. So we're going to remove it from your mind. The moment we remove it from your mind, not me, but the power of the Holy Spirit, you will see uh, that you will see that you know you begin to recover very quickly. You know the Scripture says that the strong spirit of a man we sustain him in terms of infirmity so let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for your word it is written that you send your word you sent your word and he healed them of their diseases and delivered them lord i thank you for every single person watching right now because you have sent your words into their life Lord, we receive what you did for us on the cross.
cross of Calvary. Lord, I thank you that you will first and foremost, Lord, people who were oppressed with demons. I command those demons, that lie, that deception of the enemy, I command those thoughts to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask, Lord, that you will open their eyes of understanding so that they can see the provision that you have made for them in Jesus' name. Everything that you have taken away, that they have still experienced some signs and symptoms in their body, I command it to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every sickness that, sickness that is as a result of demonic oppression, I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for these healings and these miracles. I thank you for soundness of mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare in Jesus' name that as from today, you will no longer hear the voice of a stranger in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for it and I bless your name in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. You know, the Bible says before I go, uh, there is only one God and there is only one way that people can reach God and that way is through Jesus Christ who as a man gave himself to pay everyone to be free, to pay for everyone to be free. So I bring the good news to you today. I want you to give your life to Jesus so that he can do something good with your life. Our Lord Jesus Christ is going to make you a better person. I want you to be born again. I want you to be born of the water and of the spirit. You know, Jesus came so that you may have life and you have it in abundance. He came to give us eternal life. So I want you to say yes to Jesus today. I want you to accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. He, he will do for you what he has done for me. I said that what's the unique selling point? The unique selling, the unique selling point is that, uh, um, they don't use such terminology in spiritual things, but the unique thing there is that you are going to have access to the supernatural. You know, uh, you won't be deceived by people again. You won't be looking at some people as if uh, they've got some type of, you know, special status. You can also go call God your daddy. You can call God your father. He can speak to you and then you can speak to him. So if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus name. Amen. Congratulations if you said that prayer. I want you to do one more thing. I want to send some materials to you free of charge that is going to help you grow spiritually. And if you got any question, uh, you see our addresses on the screen. You can get in touch with us. I want to encourage you to find a local church around you that you can join. Um, if you want to be part of our fellowship, we're in Luton in Bedfordshire. We meet on Sundays. We have a series of online programs that we do. You can be part of. We have interactive Bible study every Friday 9 to 10. Uh, so if you text us, then we will be able to uh, give you the details on how to join those programs. May God himself the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And, um, you know, if this video has blessed you, I want you to share with your friends. Until we come your way, same time tomorrow, 10 p.m. UK time. Thank you and God bless you. Bye.